I'm completely surrounded by fruit trees. These fruit trees are heading off to my homestead where I'm going to be planting out a full fruit tree orchard. And these are combinations of pears, uh, peaches and nectarines. But how did I make my decisions to buy these trees? What was I looking for? That's what this video is about. I'm going to be covering everything from the bags they're in through to their top little growing tips. I'm going to have chapters in the description, so if you want to move through to the section that is most important to you, please do use the chapters. But otherwise, enjoy what's going to be a very informative video. When we go out looking for fruit trees to add into our garden, into some pots, or if you are putting out your own orchard on, on your property, we all want these beautiful, blossoming, fruiting fruit trees. But the reality is, more often than not, we end up with something like this, which is just a whole bunch of sticks. Finding something like this is really an oddity. This is a complete lucky find where it has been pruned to perfection. There are four branches. It has fruit all over the place. It's blossoming. There are leaf nodes, flower nodes. It's perfect. So we're gonna start at the very bottom, which is the bags that the plants are in. Now it's important to note that nurseries price their trees based on the bags that they're in. Now, a little sneak peek into some some sneaky things that nurseries can do to up the price is every season, or maybe not every, but every few seasons, they will up bag a tree. Now, if you see a tree like this, this one is in not so big a bag. So this is an absolute steal. And in South African rands, I hope you're sitting down. I paid 149 rand for this tree. Absolute steal. Now, if we look at this bag, it is one size smaller but the tree itself is also way smaller and it is not structured this one was 89 rand still relatively cheap for a fruit tree but the difference comes in in the size that they're in i can tell you now that this nursery for this tree in front of me could easily have potted this two sizes bigger and charged almost five six hundred rand for that tree and it probably would have sold so when you are looking at your trees, have a look at the bags that they're in. Scratch around a bit and have a look at the roots. If it looks like it's a freshly, freshly bagged tree, rather go and look at some other places or rather look at some other, other tree options which are in slightly smaller bags because where you're going to find your bargain is finding the biggest, thick, biggest tree with the thickest trunk, flowering, fruiting in the smallest bag. That's where you're going to find your absolute steals of trees. Now, one of the most underestimated and most misunderstood aspects of growing your own fruit trees is this little kink in the stem. And what this is, is the graft. Most people have no clue that fruit trees are actually grafted. And those of you that do might know that they're grafted, but have no idea what the grafts actually mean. So with grafting, there are a few things you need to take into account. And I'm going to bring another tree in here to show you as an example. This is a pear tree. The graft is right over here. And this is a completely vertical graft. It is a beautiful graft that is strong, straight from the rootstock. This is a really good graft. This, on the other hand, is also a good graft, but it's, it's off quite a bit, which means if you plant it up, you're going to have a skewed tree, which you can correct over time. Don't worry about this too much because it's it's something that is very popular and you'll find about a 45 degree. What you don't want is to look at grafts that are much deeper because then something has gone wrong. Also, what you need to do is you need to inspect the graft. If there is any signs of decay, any signs of cracking splitting breakage don't buy it because <laughs> you're gonna have a problem the other thing to look out for when it comes to grafts is i think i've got an example here 
is to look at further down, there's some green growth. The graft is all the way up here, so there's quite a long piece. Now, in very rare circumstances, you'll find that the nursery did not look after their trees at all. And there's the graft. You will have branches coming out below the graft, which means the rootstock has now taken over the main trunk of the tree. So you need to make sure that you have one trunk coming out from the base, don't have any sprouts, and that you have no growth below the rootstock. And that brings me on to rootstock. A question you should always, always ask at the nursery is what do the colors on their trunks mean? Here, we have a pink. Pink color, this one is painted purple and yellow. Now I, for the life of me, cannot remember <laughs> what the colors meant for these specific trees because I got them a little while ago. But what they mean is the type of tree you are going to end up getting. The colors represent vigor, growth rate, size, and also things like whether they are drought hardy, how much moisture they can, can withstand, what, what is their disease resistance. A lot of characteristics in the final tree you're going to be getting comes from the rootstock that it is grown on. Now, if you're in an urban space, you have a limited amount of space. Let's say the space behind me over here. You do not want a full grown rootstock tree because you're probably going to end up with a six meter by six meter tree, which is not going to fit over here. You're going to want something that is semi dwarfing or dwarfing. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to slow down the vigor of the tree. And it's going to allow you to have a much more compacted tree, which is purely down to the characteristics of the roots and the base that the tree is grafted onto. So don't just go and buy trees. There are questions you need to ask, things you need to look for. So I'm hoping that just by looking at the bag and within the first 30 centimeters of the tree, the graft, you already know so much more about picking the correct tree. Now that we move up the trunk a little bit, we start looking at what is happening with branch placement and trunk structure. This one you can see has been structured with its bowl relatively low down, about knee height. This one doesn't, but this one has a lot of small little branches which is going to ultimately lead me to the decision I'm going to explain to you. With my orchard, what I want is varying heights. I don't want my peaches and nectarines, apples, pears, all to be the same size. I don't want them all to come, be coming from the same space. I want variation so we can get airflow, airs moving around nicely, sunlight, all of that. So this one, as an example, has four branches coming from a very specific point, which is about knee height off the ground. Now this tree is never going to be a high tree. It's always going to be short. It's going to be wider. So you're probably going to have to duck under it, but it's going to be nice and compact with four branches and probably the fruit will always be within reach. This one, on the other hand, I have to make it go behind me, has a very straight trunk all the way up until this point, and here we have branches everywhere. And if I stand up next to it, you'll see this is where the branches are pretty much starting. I'm almost 1.9 meters tall, so that is, I would say about 1.6, maybe 1.5 meters tall, where the first splitting branches occur. Now this is very important, because if you want a tall tree, but you choose this one because it looks good, you're going to have to do a lot of sacrificial pruning to get a very tall tree. If you want a very short tree and you choose something like this, the opposite is going to apply where you're going to have to do a trunk chop all the way at the bottom, which is going to set you back probably about two years because you're going to have to trunk chop, then wait for all the buds to go, and you're going to have to start selecting your branches from there. 
I've done a trunk chopping video on a peach tree, which I will link for you so you can have a look so that you know what to do when you trunk chop. So knowing the height that you want your tree to start growing at or start branching out is crucially important in choosing what trees you're going to be end up walking away with. Now, some of the things you need to consider, and this is a really good example, is do you want an open center goblet vase sh shaped tree? Do you want an upright tree, which is modified upright, modified central leader, things like that, with branches coming off the sides? Those are two of your main growing considerations that you need to give with your tree. Now this, for me, is the perfect tree when it comes to indecision. Because what we have is at this specific point, which is quite low, we have one, two, three, and they're in a vase shape. So if I wanted this to be a vase shaped tree, I could cut this whole center piece out and I will have a perfectly structured three pronged tree. If on the other hand, I wanted it to be a taller tree, then what I have is a whole bunch of side branches already in place. So if I decide to go central, I can lose all of these bottom ones, keep the central one, and I've already got branches to choose from. This is the best case scenario for indecision. This is the best case scenario for <clears throat> knowing exactly what you want. And here are some other examples as well. This one is a bending one. So from the graft, it bends that way and then it bends the opposite. But this one, I'm gonna straighten up. But this is also one that's going to be tall. So I know this one as an example. All of these down here are going to come off. And from these three, I'm going to choose one. And that is going to be my modified leader. Because I've got my tree that's going, this is the continuation of the branch, but I won't choose that one. I'll choose one of these two just to break it off. And then I'll have a bit of a curving tree and that will be my new leader. The branches eventually are not going to be coming from this main trunk. It's going to be coming from the leader. Because if I stand, you can see how short it, it already is. So this one, foresight, I don't really worry about the structure too much because I've already picked this one as my new modified leader. Everything with time is gonna come from that tree. So that just explains to you how you need to take the overall shape into, into consideration, how you need to look at the growing tips, what's happening. And then what you also need to be doing is, if you look at this, it's a dead branch, completely dead. But what I did do is I went through a whole tree and I saw that only the bottom limbs here were dead. The top ones were perfectly fine. So when you wanna buy a tree, look around, look and make sure that the, the growing tips on your branches look like that, that they have swelling buds. And on this pear tree, you can see there's a growing tip there. They've all got healthy growing tips. You don't want dead, dried out, broken off tips. Then what you will often find is that nurseries come winter time or actually very, very early winter, sometimes autumn, will just come through and hedge cut everything. And then you have a problem because what you have is potentially a beautiful upright tall tree like this that has without any consideration just been chopped. And then you have a bit of a problem. So once again, if that's your only option, then you start looking for that modified central leader. Where is it being cut? Has it been correctly cut at an angle next to a bud that can allow the growth? If your nursery has just straight chopped all of them, I would probably rather go and look somewhere else because a straight cut is just going to send branches growing everywhere. You want an angled cut at a bud. You want considered cuts on your trees. And then you've got things that you can start working with. So um, structure is a hugely important part of choosing your tree. Then we look at probably the most important part, which is compatibility and pollination. 
you need to not only be asking your nursery because in a lot of instances you might not get the correct answer take your phone with google it ask people you know but you need to make sure that you know if the trees that you are taking are self-pollinating self-fertile or if they need a pollinator if you go and buy one pear tree because you don't have space for two you're probably not going to ever end up with pears unless there's another pear tree in the area because most pears i'm saying most because there are some self-pollinating pears do need friends or pollinators the same with almonds and and then there are things like olives that you can self-pollinate but you'll get so so much bigger harvest with a pollinator nectarines peaches plums all the stone fruit they are very much self-pollinating but the same thing applies if you have a few different types next to each other it will increase the pollination percentage so always ask if you want this specific tree because it has the perfect bag size the perfect price the perfect trunk the perfect structure the perfect branches you need to start asking is this the right tree for me? Do I need one? Do I need two? Do I need three? Because <laughs> in some instances, with some apples, you'll need one apple that pollinates the other one, but you need another one to pollinate that one, and you don't just want to waste the trees. Then you need three so that they're all getting pollinated. So those are the questions you need to be asking yourself and the people at the nursery before you go and buy your trees to make sure you don't just end up with a pretty fruit tree that never gives you any fruit. Then the final tip I have for you is to be patient. When you are looking for your trees, take time, especially if you want to get results quickly. Fruit trees in general are a long-term commitment, but we are quite lucky with things with like nectarines, plums, apricots, um, peaches, because they do flower and put on fruit very quickly very early if we look at things like apples pears olives they take up to three four five years depending on the age of the tree so if you want a very quick fruiting variety look at look at your stone fruits but in general when you buy your tree don't have the mindset of i am going to buy this tree and get fruit in the same year potentially not even next year look at your fruit tree with I am shopping now, but I have a structure in mind for two, three, four years' time, and that's what I'm working towards. It takes some time, it takes a bit of vision, but you need to be thinking in three years' time when this has taken up its space and it's fruiting, am I going to be happy? Like I said, finding something like this with the perfect four branch goblet shape in huge flower with nectarines already on <laughs> i cannot tell you how much of a rare find that is so this will give fruit this year i will obviously thin them so there's only three or four fruits to not take out the energy but this one is perfect the others i know this pear as an example is relatively young so i'm expecting that in year three to four is when i'll start getting fruit so I hope you now have a better understanding of when you go strolling in the nursery, looking at fruit trees, expanding your orchard, what are some of the things you need to be looking for? What are some of the questions you need to be asking yourself, your phone, as well as some of the people that work at the nurseries? And if you found this video valuable, please share it out to your fellow gardening communities fellow like-minded people and and if you enjoyed this video please consider buying me a coffee to support the work that i do and please remember to subscribe as well there's a lot of cool videos coming up soon i'm actually even though this one is perfect it still has some work that needs to be done that's going to be the next video is all of these i am going to be pruning and i'm going to talk you through my every pruning decision so that you know when you have trees that come back from the nursery that need some important decisions to be made with pruning, but you know what to do. So that's coming up next. Make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching this video.